if you asked me who are the main influencers on my particular theology on my and my life, I would say there are some people that I really love in my research. I found that I'm gravitating towards them for various reasons. So um, I particularly love uh, 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 Manuel Gacciola Gacciola. I, 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 it, there's an X in his name, but I, as I'm not a Spanish speaker, I'm not from, uh, from the Hispanic culture, I might pronounce that wrong, so forgive me if I do. But Manuel Gacciola Gacciola, he is a oneness Pentecostal, was a oneness Pentecostal apostolic, um, served in uh, Mexico, and of course, he was one of the very first ones ones who tried to bridge the gap between Trinitarian theorizing and oneness Pentecostal theology. So he served as one of the presidents of SPS, which is the Society of Pentecostal Studies, and that fosters a sense of interactions over the years. I think it was back in the 80s and then later in the 90s and so on and so forth. So within the Pentecostal faith tradition, uh, Manuel Gacciola Gacciola uh, actually served within that period. So I loved Manuel Gacciola or Gacciola Gacciola as it's, uh, I think it is appropriately um, uh, pronounced. And then I love Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Dietrich Bonhoeffer was part of what we call the Confessing Church in Germany during the time of Hitler. Dietrich Bonhoeffer, uh, he's the one who wrote the book, The Cost of Discipleship. He talks about cheap grace and free grace and how grace should cost you something. And one of the reasons why I gravitate towards Dietrich Bonhoeffer, it's because Bonhoeffer becoming a part of the Confessing Church was originally a part of the state church of, what, of which Hitler was a part. And he made a plot to assassinate Hitler because he thought that the state church had let Christianity down, so to speak. And so he made a plot to, um, to kill Hitler. In the end, his plot was found out and he was killed, of course, there in Nazi Germany. But Dietrich Bonhoeffer became known as a man for others, one who looked out for others, and he used Christ's model as a means of looking out for others. Christ gave himself for others, and so Dietrich Bonhoeffer himself gave himself for the cause of the confessing church resisting the state church of which, Hit, of which Hitler and the henchmen and others were a part. So not only do I love Manuel uh, Gacciola Gacciola, uh, but I also love Dietrich Bonhoeffer. And, I'm, and there are several others, uh, 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 I would say, uh, that I gravitate towards theologically. Um, and, and, and one of the persons that impressed me actually was my lecturer as well, and, and the, uh, Professor Tina Beatty. And I know sometimes we get the jitters when we hear about feminists, but she is a feminist theologian, theologian from the Roman Catholic strand. And she got me interested in studying people like uh, Peggy and Linda Day, um, Mary Daly, Phyllis Tribal, uh, uh, and, uh, you know, um, Athalia Brenner, the Jewish feminist theologian, and, and so on and so forth. And I started to study feminist approaches to biblical studies. And what that did for me was to elevate my understanding, actually, about how Jesus treated women in the biblical corpus. So when we speak of femini feminism and biblical feminism, we're not talking about the radical element that tries to replace the roles and functions of man and masculinity, but really how to elevate women to that of an equal status to men, at least ontologically. So if not functionally, we are functionally different, male and female, but ontologically, there's an e e equality in being. And so it's kind of a moving from the complementarian approach to a more egalitarian approach. So those, I would say, are three persons that influenced me uh, personally. Emmanuel Gacciola Gacciola, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, and of course, Tina Beattie uh, when, she, when I was at Roehampton with Tina Beattie.